want to put mine off and put yours on. Okay. Go well, good morning, everybody. But, but just stand. But we want you I will on. stand right here. I, well, normally I move, but that's fine. That's fine. So if I get a little weepy over this, it was a big deal. So I'll apologize up front. So <clears throat> I'm walking this morning. I wasn't yesterday or the day before. I dislocated my left ankle. It was at work. Um, I rolled over, heard a snap, and my ankle became very large. And uh, they took it over and said, need surgery. Pin it. So the doctor's report wasn't good initially. Um, so I'm, it, it was kind of an interesting thing because it never, I was just, it, it never lost peace. I'm not, it was just kind of like, oh, okay, cool to know. Surgery, I guess. They said, come back next week, see an orthopedist. Because we're going to have to plan to get this thing fixed. And uh, gave me crutches. And it was out, it was, uh, um, he saw the pictures. It was, I would say, the size of a small bowling ball. A lot of edema in there. It was clicking. It was really nasty. And um, they had to put it back in place. Well, he did that when they were x-raying. It snapped back into place, which is fine. It had to be done. No pain meds, just it happened. Um, but the thing, the thing that was amazing to me um, was that I'm here today because I'm walking on it. Sorry, I moved. I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm going back. The thing that was cool about it, and I hope this encourages everybody today, is at no point did I try to pre-qualify myself for the healing. <laughs> you know, you spend your life in the law. And I was telling you the funny stories. It's kind of a funny story that I used to, I love to deer hunt and I love to fish. And I never used to go fishing after I'd argue with my wife because I'm like, God's not going to eat me fish. <laughs> it's truth though. I never deer hunted the week's that I told an off-color joke or that I would argue because I'm just like, I haven't earned a deer. It sounds, it sound, but we all do it, I think, on some level. We qualify ourselves for what we think God's going to give us. Anyway, it never occurred to me this week to qualify myself. I went home on crutches. Ankle's fine. No swelling. Um, so, um, that's all I wanted to share with my family is no surgery needed. Please don't pre-qualify yourself for God's move in your life. He's awesome. So, thanks for listening. Um, if you want to see the, if you want to see the photo of, of his ankle, he do, do have it on his phone. It, it really looks. It really looked bad, and um, that's Jesus healing him. He just say, Lord, you know what? Children, children want to go with Gailey. Gailey is doing Sunday school today. If the children want to go with her, and um, Amen, Hallelujah. So, isn't that an awesome testimony? Yes. Jesus is amazing. Yes. His word is the truth. We give God the glory, Amen, yes. and. Uh, we are just thankful for stuff like that. See, that's the grace of God. It's not what we do. It's not how you qualify with all your good things. It's He qualify us. Amen. So today we don't have scriptures on here. Emily and Nick is not here today. And um, so that's all good. You guys know the scriptures. You know the word. But I got such a sermon for you today because today I'm going to talk the last part on faith year part three. And I'm going to talk about how your Thoughts and your emotions is involved with faith. <laughs> How many of you know that, that that can play a role big time? And we're going to show you that, that it can affect, it affects your, your, your faith walk. How many of you know that your life basically depends a lot on thinking? Um, um, you, you think a lot. You really, really um, 
thoughts have so much power on us. But first of all, I want to bring something over to you that I think that is really important. And that is that faith does not make things easy. It makes it possible. <laughs> okay, I want to say it again. Faith does not make things easy. It makes it possible. How many of you today have an impossible situation? And if you listen to, to what we have been preached over the last two Sundays, please go and listen to that. It's on YouTube and it is on Podbean. It's going to help you a lot in the area of faith. Okay. So I want to read this verse to you out of the Living Translation. And this verse is called is in 1 John 4, verse 15 to 17. I want to read it to you. It says, anyone who believes and says that Jesus is the Son of God has God living in him. Wow. Isn't that awesome? How many of you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Scriptures say that God is living in you. That's how simple the gospel is. I'm going to make it easy for you as we go on. on. All right. And He is living with God. We know how much God loves us because we have felt. I want you to hear that word felt. Felt His love and because we believe Him, when he tells us that he loves us dearly, God is love, and anyone who, who, who lo lives in love is living with God, and God is living with him. That is 1 John 4, 15 to 17 in the Living Translation. Now, here's one thing that I want to say to you this morning. Some churches, some circle, uh, 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 ministry circles don't like, when you talk about faith, to use the word feeling. All right? Stay away from feelings. That's a very, very strong message. I want to tell you something about feelings today. God has created me with feelings. Yeah. You've created you with feelings too. The don't, don't run away. Please hold on because I will explain to you how this works. Amen? Okay, so the key to experience or feeling the love of God is to believe it. How many of you in your lifetime have felt God? Huh? Very few of you feel you felt him. <laughs> well, today I want to help you that you can feel him. Amen. Um, I'm going to make some statements here that can maybe twist things for you, but that's okay. It's going to get better. All right. Love that is not felt has no value. Love that is felt will change our entire life. Isn't that true? Imagine me and Kathy had a relationship and I cannot feel any love coming from her. Don't you think that would be horrible? But the fact that this beautiful woman loved me and I feel love coming from her, that has changed the course of my life. How many of you know that when you fall in love, you were really excited and then your life course was changed when you got married? I'm joking. <laughs> anyway, that's a joke. Okay. But... You need to learn how I'm doing things in life. Maybe it's just, okay. Like it or not, our lives is governed by feelings. Every day you feel stuff. Come on. Yeah. Are some of you numb that you don't feel a thing anymore? <laughs> there is people today that is numb, that really do not feel anything. And, but they are in bondage. They need deliverance. All right? Um, that's understandable. I've, I've met with Christians that say, I, I'm honest with you, I'm at a state in my life that I'm numb. There's nothing going on anymore. You know. And this is where the message of grace comes in and really, really set people free. So um, here's what I want to say to you that where faith comes in. We should not f follow feelings, okay? Um, especially when it's negative feelings. <laughs> We are not following feelings. Are you guys with me? Um, we should not make decisions based on feelings. Okay? Um, most of the time, the best decisions in life is when me and you make a decision based on peace. When we have absolute peace, this is the best place to make a decision. If you don't have peace, back off a little bit and say, okay, all right, all right, you know... Um, Let's, let's just consider this a little bit more. Let's pray a little bit more. Let's, let's work through this. Let's talk through this a little bit more. I've dis dis discovered that when me and Kathy have conflict about a situation, how many of you marriages have no conflict? No. 
all of you. You are all perfect. So when we have conflict, then, it, then it's just very difficult to make a decision. Are you guys with me? But if there is peace between us and we have peace about a situation, it's very good to go forward from them. And that's the same thing with you and God, with you and the Father. If you have a word from Him, um, you can go forward as long as there is peace. But, is the, but if the light go on red, <laughs> peace is like a green light. You're just going and you're going. Amen. And um, so, <clears throat> but in reality, every decision, listen to me. I, I want to go with you slowly through this because this is going to help you today, okay? It helped me. But in reality, every decision, thought, or action produces some kind of feeling, and we ultimately live out of those feelings. Huh? Let me put it this way. How many of you know if you hate your job, you really not function from out of a good feeling? How many of you know that if you love your job, then you really like it, and you function from out of like, man, I, li I like what I'm doing. Amen. I, I like what I'm doing. This is amazing what I'm doing. So um, when, we, when we are angry, we, we seldom bring peace into a situation. Are you guys with me? Um, when we are sad, we seldom bring cheer into a situation. Okay. Um, therefore, now we're going to get into the good stuff. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. All right? So I want to help you this morning here that you begin to see how powerful, how real your thoughts and your emotions play a role in your faith walk with God. Okay? Um, let me put it this way. This way. If there is bitterness in the kingdom, uh, uh, excuse me. This is the question I want to ask you. Is there bitterness in the kingdom of God? Nope. Is there sadness in the kingdom of God? Nope. Is there anger in the kingdom? Nope. There's no. Is there depression in the kingdom of God? Not at all. So, there's no fear in the kingdom at all. So, you know, we, you could never experience real peace or joy unless you are set free, and we're going to talk about it now, a sin conscience or a sin nature. You will never ever experience real joy, real peace. I'm talking about real joy, real peace. The world can offer you joy. The world can offer you peace, but it's temporary. Right. Yep. Are you guys with me? Yep. It's temporary. It's like, okay, the guy gave me 10 steps in my counseling session, <laughs> and I'm doing my 10 steps in my counseling session, but I'm telling you right now, that 10 steps is gone tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you, you can't live on 10 steps every day. Um, and peace is a really vital necessity. So, so that's why Jesus said to people, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So the point that I want to make here this morning is, is that the moment that I have found His righteousness, how many of you agree that over the last two, three weeks, we have been talking strong on righteousness and that righteousness is a gift. And God made you righteous. You cannot make yourself righteous. Amen. When you pick up and believe that He made you righteous, say I'm righteous. When you pick up and believe that He made you righteous, guess what? This is when things begin to change. And the moment that I understand that I'm righteous or that I'm innocent, I don't seek the kingdom anymore. Okay, I want to say it again. The moment that I understand that I'm innocent and righteous, I don't seek the kingdom anymore. Suddenly I realize it has shown up in my life. As long as I have guilt and condemnation, it always felt like the kingdom is far away. There is a distance. But the moment that I understand I'm as innocent as Jesus is innocent, in that moment I realize I have the kingdom. That's why he's saying Col Colossians, that he have transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the son of his love. You are already in the kingdom. Even though you don't feel it now, say to the person next to you, it's going to get better. <laughs> see, see righteousness, God's righteousness, the gift of righteousness, the righteousness that Jesus gave you that you didn't work for. That righteousness destroy every form of separation in your mind between you and God. There's no other way. I'm going to prove it to you again. People just don't get this. Let me do this. Let me do this. 
a state of innocence and a state of righteousness is what the kings and kingdom function on all the time. Look at Steve's testimony this morning. He said, I had peace. Come on. You remember he said that? I had peace. What is the fruit of righteousness? Peace. He said, I had peace. Grace work in an environment of peace. Because that's why Paul said in the beginning of his letters, grace and peace unto you. He said, I'm going to tell you again in this letter about grace because you have lost the message of grace so that you can have peace again. Isn't it awesome? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I love that. All right, we have, we have taken some. Listen to this. Righteousness established this truth in you. Let me give it to you. This is what God said to you this morning. To each one of you. Say to the person next to you, this is what God is saying to you today. My opinion, God said to you this morning, my opinion of you is so high that I come and live in you. <laughs> God said, my opinion of you is so high that I come and live in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Because glory is the view and opinion of God that He has of you. Are you guys with me? So He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The moment that you understand the view and opinion that God has of you, that He sees you as innocent and righteous in His sight, you suddenly believe He is in me. I had a pattern or a way that I was praying in the mornings to get God to come. I would confess my sins and everything and bind devils. And I had certain steps to get into God. And then finally, after I have come to the conclusion, all those things have been dealt with. Now God must show up. Are you guys with me? In the meantime, he was there all the time. <laughs> it was me who were confused in my mind. Are you with me? It's me who were, who were bound by religion that there is a separation between me and God. But the moment that the righteous revelation of the righteousness that we receive as a free gift in Christ Jesus was revealed to me from that moment on, I had no more doubt that God is living in me. The separation was closed in. Amen? Thank you for enthusiasm. You may sit down now. Um... We're going to get into thoughts, you know. Here's, here's the thing. How many of you know this verse? We have quoted this verse so many, many times. He says, Beloved, 3 John 1, verses 2, uh, he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Amen? He said, Beloved, I wish that you may be in good health and that you may prosper just as your soul prospers. So, John knows, <laughs> when he said this, John knows, absolutely knows, that you as a, that you are a, a, as a born-again believer. Um, excuse me, John knows that the spirit of a born-again believer is absolutely perfect. And he knows that it prospers. Do you know that your spirit prospers? Your spirit is in health. Your spirit actually carries healing. Your spirit carries prosperity. It carries it because it's from Christ. But John also knows when he wrote that, that your soul can be a big problem. Are you with me? Because your spirit is perfect, but your soul can be a problem. Because your soul is your thoughts or your intellect. It's your emotions and it's your will. Now you need to listen very careful because this is going to help you today. Your soul is your thoughts, your intellect, and your, emo uh, your uh, emotions and your will. That's what your soul is combined of. This is what it is all about. You think a lot, except for some men. We have, sometimes we think of nothing. We just sit there. <clears throat> Until your wife speaks to you. Oh. What were you thinking of? Nothing. <laughs> when a man say to you that he wasn't thinking of anything, he speaks the truth. <laughs> That's a joke of that other guy who preaches on. So, just believe me. Kathy never believes me. No, I don't believe you. Tell me what you're saying. No, nothing. No, you lie. No, I got nothing. <laughs> so... Um, See, your, 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 your spirit, your spirit, your spirit will never, ever, ever change. Never. 
Your, your spirit will never change. Never. Cannot. Impossible. Because you are born again by the incorruptible. Say incorruptible. Seed of the living word of God. That seed is Jesus Christ himself. It is perfect. It's, it's full of life. It's full of health. It's full of prosperity. It's inside of you. Isn't that awesome? That's why I know that this little church of us, I know this stuff that we preach. Like what happened with Steve? This is just powerful. I just know that as we go along, this thing is going to come loose. And it's not going to be like, okay, we have prayed so many hours. That's why God has showed up. I am always so surprised when things happen and people say, yeah, but you remember, we have been prayed. Oh, so it was us? No, it's not us, it's Him. Prayer to me is about relationship with God. I'm not saying we mustn't ask Him for things. Of course we ask Him for things. But we can't take the glory. You see how a, a movement come to an end when people have a powerful movement? The moment when people begin to talk about the intercession part and how we have interceded and how we have done these things and this is why God is showing up, we begin to lose it because the glory comes to us and not to Him. I don't have a problem that we do intercession. Don't understand me wrong, people. I don't have a problem that we pray. We pray. We intercede. But it's intercession to me and prayer to me is more about you connect with God, man. Jesus' intercession was like, I hear what I do nothing unless my Father shows me. That, that was his intercession, meeting with the Father. Don't you think I will have a more powerful impact in Todd and Mary Ann's life if I come to them and minister to them by something that the Father has shown me and I minister to it, don't you agree with me? That's powerful intercession. Absolutely. Powerful intercession right there. Because I've heard from God. Amen? I don't know, I was on a rabbit trail. It's not my sermon. So here's the thing is your spirit is perfect, but your soul is subject to chains. Your soul is, because there's stuff going on. People are, Mike, you're angry. You misunderstood people. Your boss is, is rough with you at, at your job. You may lose your job. There's, you, you, the kids got sick. There's thousands of things that happen. And your soul is all the time in connection with those things. Amen? Or oh, you guys don't have problems. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not, not happening. So, so the soul, so here's what I want to say to you this morning. Listen to me how it works. This is how it works. This is where it comes in. I have scratched myself here. The blood even run. Um, blood is coming out of my body. All right. Why are you laughing, Kathy? <laughs> anyway. Um, so you, 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 you distracted the people now. It's a very... very very important point I want to make here. All right. So, the mind, the mind produces thoughts. Now listen to this. Thoughts produces emotions. And emotions determines your will. The mind produces thoughts and your thoughts produces emotions. And emotions determines your will. Now let me explain it to you. All right. How many of you agree with me that every thought, basically every thought that you have, it depends on where your mind is, create an emotion. Okay, let me talk to you this way. Your mind can go back to the past where someone have heard you. Emotion. You agree with me? You can think of something in the past where things went wrong. That thought brings an emotion. Yeah. You still with me? Yeah. There was, you can maybe have a sickness in your body and you were disappointed in the past. Listen to me carefully now. Where you have trusted the Father and nothing have happened. And now you, you have a sickness or a problem again. And the moment that you go to that sickness... The thought pop up and disappointment, the emotion come out of that. It can be fear, it can be discouragement, it can be hopelessness. All kinds of emotions runs out of your thinking. But that's the bad news. Thank God for good news. Amen. Are you guys with me? That's the bad news. 
Thoughts produce stuff. I, I was thinking the other day, I, was, I saw people on a roof. <laughs> I saw people on a roof doing, this is how your thinking work. I saw people on a roof doing roofing. How many of you know I've ever done the roofing? That's hard work. That's like really, really hard work. And I was in a situation some years ago where a guy gave me a quote, and I was desperate for money. So I quoted, I did roofing at a stage up in Canada. So a guy gave me a quote. A guy asked me to come and give him a, it was a lawyer, this guy. You already deal with a lawyer. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> I love lawyers. Anyway, and, um, and so I, he asked me to come and do his roof. And he says, you know what? I had about 10 contractors that year, not one of them want to do it. And I look at the roof, I walk around the home, and I'm like, why not? You know, why would 10 contractors, this is a big job, this is, this is big money here, this is good money, you know? So I said, I can do that. <laughs> big mistake. So he, he took it on, I took it on. He accept my quote, we put up, when I got onto that roof, I suddenly realized it's not a 412 level, it's like a 1212 level, that thing is like, and it's the two-story home. Now suddenly I realize when I am up there, I realize, okay, all right, no, now we talk about the roof jacks, we talk about harnesses, we talk about, I need more guys, this is the slowing the job down, and I told him I'm going to do it in this period of time. Now, a fear came on me. Man, and we get into that thing, and I had to, on the end of the day, go back to this guy and say, I need another week. And he said, no, it's okay. You know, I wanted you out here earlier. And now I have to pray because rain and all kinds of stuff is threatening me now. Are you with me? And, he's, and we are taking shingles off from the roof. It's just, man, it's just. And I not, was not long, long in, the, in the game, so I did it. So the, and, and, I, and it was such a horrible. Some nights I didn't even sleep. I was praying right through the night, Jesus, please. <laughs> So I saw a guy the other day on the roof. I passed by, I saw him, and that horrible feeling came on me. Are you guys with me? I saw him doing that, and I thought, that thought of that moment, that thought hit my, hit my mind, and that horrible feeling. I said, thank you, Jesus, that I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me to never get on a roof again. Are you with me? And it's, it, I'm, I'm just giving you an illustration of how your thoughts can run into situations. And sometimes you can have a bad experience in the past and the thought came up and it hinders you, your will because your emotions, the moment your emotions is affected, it hinders your will. If you have positive emotions, your will is working, man. You are going. You are going forward. I'm telling you. But if there is hopelessness in your emotions, there is depression in your emotions, there is fear in your emotions, it hinders your willpower in life. Yeah. You guys with me? Thank Jesus for the gospel. Amen? Yeah. Um, um, sometimes people have a problem that they can't overcome. It's like it's continuously there. The fear is there. I, there was a time in my life that I was living with a fear not there, and I don't even know where it came from. That I try to analyze stuff. Where, because some people live in fear. They don't even know where it comes from. They, they, they don't even know why it's there. Some people live in depression because, because of that. And, and it was a thought in the past, a situation or a moment that have triggered it. Yeah. Triggered that thing. Yeah. And it's there. But the power of grace, the power of the gospel will set you free when you begin to hear how God works for us. So, so let me go on here, uh, talking a little bit here. Let me give you this. 1 John 3, 20 to 23, make this statement. This is what 1 John 3, 20 to 23 says. He says, Beloved, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. Amen. And if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. Yeah. You guys agree with me? Say confidence. So the heart, Paul, uh, the, the writer of Proverbs say, as men think in his heart, so easy. So what happened with us is, is your, your soul got, got hurt in life with, with things that happen. And then it ends up in your belief system. You guys know that I don't have to teach on that. Your belief system is your heart. The Bible says with your heart you believe. So the, as men think in his heart, so easy. So that means he lives. So that's why people have this feeling in them. 
and they have this thing that is driving them in life. What is wrong with me? How many of you have been there? The, what is wrong, wrong with me? But the point is that situation or that something has taken root in your belief system. That's why you have that continuous depression or the continuous fear. You have that continue. You can't even, uh, you can't even understand how to get out of this thing. But then you hear the gospel. Because, listen to this, if God is greater than your heart, listen to this, I posted this on Facebook this week, then let Him restore innocence to your heart because you need confidence, not condemnation. <laughs> now we get to the good things here. Say hallelujah. How many of you agree with me that the righteous shall live by faith? Amen? The innocent, the other word for, for righteousness is innocent. So the innocent shall live by faith. So if, we, if you want to, where do we start? Where do we begin to get free of these things? That's why you have to study the letters of Paul. And Paul will always start with this one reality. Hey, I want to bring you guys back to this one thing. Guess what? Remember you were sinners when I arrived there? And then I teach to you the gospel and I tell you what the gospel is. And you will find out that you are actually now being set free of sin and you have been made righteous. You guys remember when I was there? Now I write it in a letter back to them. And he bring them back to this one thing, their innocence. by Because guilt and condemnation rob you of your... That is coming out of those thoughts. Because you can have emotions like depression. And you can have the emotions of fear or bitterness or hatred. You can have these emotions. But on the end of the day, it's the guilt and the condemnation condemnation that blocks everything it's like almost like a blanket that form a stronghold with condemnation and guilt over it so now he come and he bring innocence to them back and this is the thing people let me tell you something if you can understand how innocent and how righteous you are then pure thoughts will awaken from your innermost being isn't that awesome are you guys with me you guys still following me? So my thoughts, listen to this. Your, you reign in life because of your thinking. That's why Paul talked about renewing of the mind all the time. The mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Why? Because you can have, we have all the faith. We have the gift of faith. We have grace in us. We have the life of God in us. We have the power of God in us. Are you guys with me? But it's the mindset on the flesh, the emotional part of you that can rob you of that. That's why he say, set your mind, the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. What spirit? The Holy Spirit that's in you. Your spirit man. Amen. So if you go back into Romans 8, you will realize that he say in Romans 8, this is what he said there. He said that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have set me free from the law of sin and death. Amen? So in reality, what happened with us is, is that if you study that passage out, they actually talk about the fact that you have the spirit of Christ in you and you have the spirit of God in you. So he said the mind set on the spirit. So my thought life will affect my faith life. Are you guys with me? So how, how do we think? <laughs> so the moment that these thoughts pop up, guess what? Go immediately to your innocence. Okay, I'm going to say it again. The moment that these thoughts pop up, go immediately to your innocence. Go immediately to your righteousness. Say righteousness. Why? Because it awakens the moment that you understand. Listen to this. The moment that you understand. That there is absolutely nothing between you and the creator of heaven and earth. That is innocence. You agree with me? The moment that you understand, I am as righteous as Jesus is. Guess what? The kingdom come in action. The kingdom awakens. <laughs> you begin to think different. Because my thoughts will tell me, you're not going to make it. Are you with me? Can I tell you over this 45 days up till now how many times the thought came up to me and we are not going to get a building. We are not going to land. We are not going to get to solid ground. I can't tell you how many times I thought every time I go back and say, nope. I'm inseparable from the love of my father because Jesus made me innocent. And my father got a plan. And he's not going to let me down. Never ever. Are you guys with me? 
These thoughts attack us. These thoughts come. We go through stuff in life and these thoughts attack us. Amen? It's not amen to this bad thought, but amen to the positive. Are you guys with me? So, to feel God, here it is, to feel God. How many of you wants to feel God? <laughs> you, you know that the first time when I, when I hear uh, this statement was made, this statement was made, and I, and I was in, 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 in um, 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 he's still in, in struggling to come into the grace message, and, and I hear this statement that says, quoting out of Romans 6, that no child of God have a legal right to call himself a sinner. When I hear that statement, I felt something move in me, a wonderful feeling. I'm like, whoa. Who do you think I felt? The devil? You must be kidding me. It was God. Are you guys with me? It was God. We can feel God. See, you can feel God 90% of the time on that plane, you can feel Him. When you think what is good, when you think what is pure, what do you think what is wonderful, because these thoughts rob you and it makes you depressed and it brings you down and you lost it. But if you think that way, guess what? You are, that means if you think what is good. Let's go to that verse in Philippians. Where is that verse in Philippians? Can you guys quote it for me? Those of you who know the Bible, I lost it for a moment. There, Philippians, what is that? Um, Philippians 2, 4. <clears throat> no, it's not that. Yeah, here it is, 4, 8, you are right. He said, finally, brethren, listen to what he said. After he teach them all these things, he say, finally. Say, finally. <laughs> that means finally. Whatever things, <laughs> whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If, if there is any virtue or if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these. Why is that important? Listen to this. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. He said, meditate on this. Why? Listen, sometimes your heart is like an airport. Are you guys with me? First time when I fly out of South Africa into London, in, in England, Heathrow. So here I sit in the plane, so I'm already nervous. I'm le I can't even really speak English properly. I mean, here I'm coming into England, of all places. Our arch enemies. Sorry, it's a joke. South Africans, we had a, we had a history with them. I'm just, we lo I love English people. Anyway, um, I'm set free of those stuff. So here I'm coming into Heathrow. And I look, I look through the window. I, the, the plane was going. I said, geez, that's a huge huge flock of birds that is flying there. And I saw it in the distance. As we get closer, I saw, no, that is planes. This is not one plane. This is, for the first time in my life, and I'm like, this plane is going there. And those planes are going like, have you seen that? Above Heathrow, that's a huge airport. I mean, probably New York, the same. And there, I mean, there is guys, they call them, who's those guys sitting in the, the navigators? Is that them? They air, air, air traffic, on, they're controlling that stuff. So I don't know that stuff. I'm stupid. I'm from Africa. Are you guys with me? So I don't know these things. I, I'm stupid with planes first time in my life. We're going to go in there. So I hold on to my seat. So we're going in there. We're going we're gonna to go into those planes that is going like this and this and this. And it looks like a flock of birds, you know. And, and the guy guided us through it. When we land, I was so happy. Man, I was so happy. I, and, 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 and I sit there, and the Holy Spirit said to me, you know what, sometimes I struggle to make a landing because your airport is too busy. He said, you know what, I struggle to make a landing in your heart because your heart is so busy thinking about stuff. The Holy Spirit is in my spirit. You understand what I'm saying to you? Absolutely, my spirit is perfect, but my heart is so busy thinking the wrong stuff, it's not at peace. Here's what grace does. Grace gives you peace. 
the peace of Jesus, not of man, the peace of Jesus, fill my heart. When the peace of Jesus is there, guess what? The Holy Spirit finally got a landing. Finally, He come into my belief system. And my thoughts and my emotions begin to change and my will get confidence to go forward in life with the things that God say to me. Woo, I think I'm preaching good now. Standing even here prideful like. <laughs> Are you guys with me? Man, oh man, oh man. You can during the day. Listen, do you think that if you think about the bad situation and meditate on the bad situation, it's going to go away? It's not going to go away. It's still there. But when you meditate on what is good and what is pure and what is true, praiseworthy and what is true, guess what? Your heart leaves that area and you are in connection with the kingdom of God. Guess what? Listen to this verse. Oh, I love this verse. I, I, I quoted this week. Oh, man, I love this verse. Listen to this verse. Thank you, Jesus, for that verse. Proverbs 16, 12 says, For a throne is established by righteousness. Woohoo! A throne is established by righteousness. You know what he's saying here? He's saying, if you, if you got the righteousness that Jesus has given you as a, as, as a free gift, the kingdom of God, the throne of God is being established in your life. Yeah. Wow! Now you think different. That's why he said this in, 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 in uh, and, and this is my last verse. This is why he said this in Colossians. I want to give it to you right straight out of Colossians. Listen to this. If you, Colossians 3.1, if you then were raised with Christ, seek those things above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. Say, set your mind. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Isn't that awesome? You can't change the situation by thinking bad and negative and agree with the circumstances and say, I'm such a bad person. How many of you know that when you say to yourself, I'm a bad person, that thought creates a bad emotion? How many of you know if you say to yourself, I'm not good enough, that creates a bad emotion? If you say to yourself, oh, I wonder if they're going to accept me. Fear of rejection immediately is the emotion. Are you with me? You guys with me? I wonder how they feel about me. Who cares? I wonder if they're going to accept me. Who cares? You've been accepted in the beloved Jesus Christ. You have been accepted in the kingdom. Are you guys with me? Wow. It's amazing. Let's stand. Did that mean anything to you guys? Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you this morning for your goodness.